And it's that time again. Here we are. Death in the fucking air here. And here in this pandemic fucking world and this virus bullshit. I'm gonna be doing a. We'll see how this goes, but I told you that there's gonna be some wrestling content coming, and here we are. Now, I fucking really used to love wrestling. It was life for me as a kid. I got into it about 94. WrestleMania 10. When I saw Bret Hart versus Owen Hart, I was in. I was in. And then I saw Michaels versus Razor Ramon in that ladder match. I was hooked. And WrestleMania 12 really brought me in. And I want to talk about the past. Uh. If you did not know who that motherfucker's music is, I feel sorry for you. I'm going to be talking about the Mastodon, the man they call Vader. I'm not going to do like a career retrospective, but I want to talk about something I'm still pissed off about to this day. And... Uh, how just in every other fucking New Japan, WCW, and all the other fucking territories Vader wrestled in, how much of a dominant monster he was, and then coming into uh, WWF in 96, he may be what lasted two and a half years. Maybe three. I think by 98 he was out. Now, Vader's, and has always been one of my all time favorite wrestlers. Very underrated, very. Stone Cold, The Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, Bret Harder, definitely the four, but when. Vader's kind of like Jake the Snake. Some, in some regards, because Jake was ever champion but he didn't need a belt all he needed was the fucking snake and I'm gonna do a video on Jake the Snake too cause he's another one of my favorites but uh The Undertaker's my all time he's the greatest he's the best he's a phenom Stone Cold's like right there Bret Hart as well but uh Vader was so believable. He was big, tough, mean, nasty. He was dirty. He was fucking. But his shit was clean for a big guy. He want. He was fucking big, and he was. He's like. What? He's way better than Yokozuna because this is kind of like right before or right after Yokozuna, and Yokozuna to me just seemed very sloppy. He was. I didn't really find him to be all that great, but Vader was believable, and it really fucking sucks that uh, Vince didn't get behind him and give him a push. I mean, they kind of tried to, but Shawn Michaels then the fucking click click killed that. We're gonna get into that, but I first remember seeing Vader. When he did that angle with Gorilla Monsoon, I was like, holy shit, fuck. And he did that because he had to go off and have some kind of uh, surgery or whatever. But Jim Cornette, who to me is one of the greatest managers of all fucking time. I love his deep, burning passion, hatred for Vince Russo. Uh... And I respect his view on how wrestling should still be, not breaking kayfabe, not breaking character, and all that. Um, but he managed Vader for a while, and 
was fucking awesome to see him and uh him and Vader walk out and that fucking music with it. Uh oh, when Vader came in he's coming off of WCW and he had probably had the greatest match of his career to some extent. Definitely one of them. A classic with Ric Flair. Even though Ric Flair won, it was still one hell of a match. Vader did not make it easy for Ric. And it was a fucking classic. One of WCW's greatest matches. And, uh. <coughs> and I know Vince was always on Vader to lose weight and all that shit, but you know. What about Yokozuna? Yokozuna, who. Not even fucking two years, three or four years before, and he kind of got to push at WrestleMania 9 and face Bret Hart and all that, which Yokozuna was alright, but he's very sop sloppy, he wasn't clean like Vader was, so I'm, I'm talking about big fucking men, cat wrestlers here, and Vader... Not only was he mean, tough, nasty, and fucking gnarly, but he was also could do a fucking moonsault, the Vader bomb. I mean, that's. And he was stiff and he was tough. Which. The fuck? That's what you get with him when you got in the ring with him. And this. I remember watching this live as a kid, SummerSlam 96. This is the fucking uh, meat and potatoes of this video. Shawn Michaels and Vader for the WWF Championship. And I remember, uh, I love Shawn Michaels. He's one of the greatest. He's fucking definitely one of the best, but he really. Fucking, uh, just him and his backstage politic bullshit. The fucking click killed Vader's push. Period. No fucking, no, no fucking way around it. And that's bullshit. Uh, this match was pretty fucking good. But it could have been better. And uh, Sean screaming at Vader because Vader fucked up a, a, the elbow job. But let's face it. If Vader really wanted to, he could have actually destroy Shawn Michaels. He just went on shoot and just stretched him and all kinds of shit. That's just the truth. Uh, this is very conflicted for me because I. I love Sean and I love Vader, but there's so much fucking, uh, so many fuck ups in WWF where they really could have gotten behind a certain wrestler, and this is one of them. Botch fucking city. No doubt. Uh, you mind? This is, this is like. Going straight into the attitude area. You want to talk about fucking attitude? Vader was full of that shit. And. He could have had a great fucking push. But. <coughs> it just really fucking sucks. And. Uh, if any of you remember out there, uh, after that Sid came in and what they were gonna do with uh, Vader and Shawn Michaels, they ended up doing with Sid, which Psycho Sid, I know one of my favorites. His that hill run and that time, and when he beat Shawn Michaels, I was kind of happy. <laughs> that match was. 
brutal. He fucking bro hit Sean with the camera and all kinds of shit. Or Sean would win the belt back. Fucking uh, I don't know. And another great match he had with him at Royal Rumble '97. Uh, also, too, one of the Vader was shoot. He had a shoot style fight with uh, Ken Shamrock. In a fucking case, I think it was New Japan. I'm not too sure, but uh, it's been a while since I've watched that. But he beat the shit out of Ken Shamrock, and so he's kind of like the Brock Lesnar of the time, except for he's not as fucking lazy and does do the same shit in every fucking match. Uh. And Vader and Cornette's promos are great, but Vader doesn't need someone like Paul Heyman. So I uh, uh, cause I know Vince always wants to push bigger guys and get behind them, and this is just. If you look at all the fucking shitness, this was uh, it's a huge missed opportunity. And I know I've listened to Jim Cornette talk about it. Vader didn't really help himself at times. He would always kind of complain and gripe about shit. But, man, I would have... Love to seeing him have matches. I mean, he did have matches with Stone Cold, but this was right before Stone Cold became the Rattlesnake. Uh, we could have had classes with The Undertaker. We could have had more classes with Shawn Michaels with Bret Hart, Owen Hart, uh, British Bulldog. I know. Uh, fucking. In your house too. Oh God, I miss that shit. I miss those days so much. That was that was the shit, man. Ordering in your house on pay per view, and all my friends would come over. Oh, it was the shit, man. It was the shit. Uh, and I know that uh, had a few in your house pay per views. Vader and taxi matches would face the Heart Foundation. But I mean, the classics that could have happened. And. <laughs> And Vader, Vader was the type to fucking be scripted and all that. He was shoot, he was believable. And that's, I, I can't stress that enough. He was over, even as a hill. Uh, but, when was Vader ever baby faced? I mean, he's, to me, he just wasn't that type of wrestler. Uh, and how fucking strong he was and the mask the gloves the fucking red and black Vader time on his fucking cross his fucking shit uh, when he come out he's just like a fucking mean and nasty bull ready to fucking destroy I love that shit there was no fancy shit there is no fucking uh which I like, but Vader was simple to the point. And, uh, maybe he could have went back to WCW after a f huge fuck up WWF gave him, but of course, I'm sure Hulk Hogan would have rode that fucking foot man chew him and been like, that doesn't work for me, brother. When I say it, when I say it underrated, you know, Vader is 
worthy of all the praise, but I mean, unless you're a wrestling fan of the 80s throughout to maybe now, you won't know who he is. You may not, you'll know who he is, but he came up in the fucking PG era and John Cena and all that. You're not going to fucking know who he is. And like I said, he's believable. You can believe in him because of his total shoot. It wasn't a work with Vader. Um, and WrestleMania 14, I know Kane uh, and Undertaker had a fairly good match, but I would love to see Undertaker and Vader at that. That would have been a great fucking match. Or oh, maybe SummerSlam with 98. Uh, I'm not too familiar with this stuff in Japan, I'll admit. Um, that was a little before I got into this, so. But. I know he was really successful over there too. Um, and you have to fucking understand that before Vader came in to WWF, he was a fucking dominant machine. He was the shit. He was fucking. Uh, he was believable. He was just dominating. Um. And he can't fuck with that. He just... Uh, he just... Had this thing about him. He threw me in as a kid. And... Uh, I'd like to know how Jim Cornette got ended up managing him because I don't think he's ever talked about that so if Mr. Cornette if you see this please tell that fucking story because I'd, I'd fucking love to hear it because <clears throat> um, you know wrestling for the most part is a work and it's fucking this and that but you know if you watch any of his matches you could believe that this motherfucker would fuck your shit up. I love that. And, uh, I would love to see him beat the shit out of Hulk Hogan as well. But Hogan probably wouldn't wait for that, especially in this time period. He was, he was doing the NWO shit, which I liked, but. NWO got bloated in too many fucking. You had the fucking main one, you had the fucking Wolf Pack. I think you even had the fucking Latino World Order WCW, I can remember. You see, I liked both. I went back and forth between both. I love WWE more, but I like WCW. I mean, I like. Right before the shitstorm came. They had some pretty good fucking shit going on too. But. Didn't last long. <coughs> also too. I think. Uh, there's. All the. I mean Goldberg. Which I'm going to talk about. I liked him. He was alright. But. And that he was over, and the way they ended that fucking ridiculous streak with the fucking catapult and shit. I think they should have. Can you imagine him and Vader having a match with two big fucking bulls fucking going at it? Vader fucking. He's three time WCW champion, but he should have. Should have gotten more in pushing when he went. And the territories. Plus, 
I mean, he was a football player. I mean, when you think about what a wrestler is, like Vader is that in the sense of the strength, the dominance, the fucking power, the fucking believable to shoot. And also, it seems to me that some of his matches are like, oh, he's on the verge of chaos. It could go either way. God fucking damn, dude. Uh, Vince really fumbled the fucking ball with him. And they turned him from a dominant monster to a fucking joke. Remember a promo or whatever else he came out saying he's a big fat piece of shit? Come on, man. Really? <sighs> if I was Vader, after that match with Shawn Michaels, I would have went backstage and beaten the shit out of him. Just can you imagine? Then at that time, even before Sean beat Brett and had Iron Man match at WrestleMania 12, he had some pretty good matches in 95. And he was really coming up in 94. And in her Continental uh, Championship and. Uh, just a year before that, December 7, 95, he had a great fucking rematch with Razor Ramon, so I'm about, I want to say, WrestleMania 10 to all the way until WrestleMania 14, Sean was on the top of his game. He was the best, but can you imagine his push getting fucking killed by backstage politics and bullshit? Just really sucks, and uh, Vader should have been one of the names to talk about in the Attitude Era because all his shit kind of went down right before that. And like I said, the classic matches that could have been fucking uh, whatnot. And you had to. The Vader should have gotten a push that Brock Lesnar and Goldberg did in time. And there's not a lot of goofy bullshit. Uh, you put Vader over and you keep him over. I don't let him get in the same routine where he does the same shit in every match, whatever. And keep that fucking toughness in that. Keep that aura about him. That it's really fucked up. Big time. So, anyway, uh, I guess that's all I got. Just still pisses me off to this day that they did that to him. And when you're a kid, you're impressionable, and how that's formative years, how shit stays with you, and all that. And I have always kind of, when I talk about it, something like, I bring up Vader because, you know, I mean, he was, he had certainly had an ego, but he wasn't like the ultimate warrior, Hulk Hogan, or that shit. I mean, not that I know of on that fucking level. Uh, fortunately, in 2018, he passed away. You know, heart problems. And rest in peace, the fucking Mastodon. Uh, I'm gonna put in the description below. He did a, a shoot interview, I think, in 2016. Kind of on his career. Highly, re highly recommend checking that out and go and watch some of those matches if you can find them. Top notch fucking Tom and it's man. He's one of my favorites and uh, one of those that you know 
a sheriff a certain age, you probably won't know who the fuck he is. And I always try to bring awareness to him because he's just, he's just fucking awesome. So, uh, I think this is gonna be a, a thing I do because. Wrestling is something that I love the past. Now it's just hard to get into and hard to watch. It's complete shit now, but. Man. Vader should have fucking gotten a push he deserved and should have fucking uh, been. Been one of those things he's talking about from the fucking Attitude Era and. Maybe a little bit beyond that. So yeah, fucking check this fucking video out. Check out some of Vader's matches and long live the fucking Mastodon. Oh, it's time! It's time! It's Vader time! <laughs>